AMD's Z5 processors are shaping up to be something very special indeed. Sure, the performance will most likely be outstanding, and we're going to talk more about the performance, IPC, and stuff like that in this video, but the entire product stack is also very intriguing indeed. Sarmac, which will be the high-end Halo products in the Strix Point lineup, for example, yes, will feature the Zen 5 CPU cores, but also a crap ton of GPU power as well. It will give us a glimpse into AMD's vision for the future and offer enough GPU performance where, honestly, low- to mid-range GPUs just won't be needed anymore. But yes, when we're looking at the uh, Granite Ridge range of Ryzen processors, of course, a Ryzen 8000, which will be Zen 5 based on the AM5 platform, that was a bit of a mouthful, it can be a little disappointing perhaps to learn that they are only 16 cores, but you can also make a very good argument that for content creators and gamers, 16 cores, 32 threads is more than what you need. And, of course, that is assuming you have enough bandwidth and I.O. to be able to actually feed those cores. In this video, then, I want to give you guys some updates concerning Zen 5, talking a lot about some benchmarks that I've heard about, plus some other stuff as well. And, as you can probably imagine, we're going to get to that, plus some more stuff, after this message from the video's sponsor. Save even more money off of your Windows 10 or 11 keys at whokeys.com, today's video's sponsor. Not only are WhoKeys offering huge discounts off of a range of CD keys, including, of course, Windows, but you can get an extra 25% off using the code RGT. You can find Windows 10, 11, as well as various Microsoft Office packages, or if you're a budding developer, even Visual Studios. And of course, it goes without saying, there's a large library of games, all at reduced prices. You can use our code RGT to get a huge discount on this entire range of software. I have personally tested the purchase experience using their own personal account, and I've also had various friends try it out as well, and the whole process has been very simple. Just navigate to the product you want to buy, click buy now, and you'll be led straight to the basket where you can add a discount code, again, RGT, for a further 25% off of the hugely reduced Halloween sale price, and then of course it will be sent straight to you. Thanks again to whokeys.com for sponsoring today's video. I think the best place to start would be some performance numbers. Then we can delve deeper into the weeds and talk more about the clocks and IPC gains which make all of this possible. That way, if you just want a TLDR, you can kind of stop after this. Now, there are a couple of notes here. The first note is that I have already released some benchmarks for the 8950X. Um, however, to my understanding, those are earlier engineering samples. So, um, yeah, obviously any of this stuff can be wrong, but what I want to talk to you guys about here is some later information. So, um, all of the results I'm about to go through are rounded up or down. So, for example, uh, 3400 could be 3359 or 3441. These are late ES, but I'm still not certain whether these are B0 revision silicon. So, B0 is scheduled to basically enter production now-ish, so I'm not certain whether these results are B0 or not. Um, I have asked, and the person was a little cagey. Anyway, um, these results also could change because obviously this is not retail silicon. There could also be some BIOS updates and I'm still not fully certain of the total configuration, for example, the memory speeds which were being used. Anyway, uh, let's get into it, shall we? So the 8950X, this of course is the non-X3D variant, is scoring in Geekbench 2, uh, 6.2, excuse me, around 3,500 single thread and 24,000 multi-thread, that's at 170 watts PPT. Geekbench 6.2 8950HS is 34, uh, 100 and 2100 at 35 watts, that's uh, single and multi thread respectively. Cinebench 2024, the same CPU, that's the 8950HS engineering sample, is 130 slash 2000, again single thread and multi thread respectively at 35 watts. Sarlacc is um, 8955HX, is performing similarly to an 8950X at 95 watts in both Geekbench and Cinebench. CPU results, obviously. The performance, however, in games is somewhere closer to an 8950X in CPU and a 6750XT in GPU. And again, the TDP is going to be configurable, um, and this is being uh, tested at 95 and 125 watts, respectively. 
Now I want to get back into the clock frequency discussion. Again, I'm focused purely on the desktop here. Server is a totally different beast, and I'm not going to bring that into the into the mix here. Now, clock frequency is a very interesting subject because I'd been hearing clock frequency regression seemed all but certain at one point, but now I'm hearing that later revision silicon is attempting to crank up the speeds. So far, um, I'm hearing that the engineering samples I'm being told about, anyway, this following information is true. So 5.6 gigahertz Fmax, Sarlacc and STX Strix are 5.1 to 5.3 gigahertz Fmax. Another source, however, is telling me that the clock frequency may still go up a little tiny bit with another revision of silicon, but things are not certain at the stage. I'm speaking to several people, and it does seem that there are some differences, though, in how clock frequency works with Zen 5. So I don't have a complete picture, but basically... Um, single thread and multi thread performance priority has essentially changed. AMD seems to have reduced the gap in clocks between single thread and multi thread workloads. Now, they're closer to parity, but of course, they're not actually parity. So, for example, if all cores are loaded, they're not going to run at exactly the same speed as like if only one thread's loaded. That isn't realistic, but there are closer. Um, they, they're closer to one another. Now, partly this is due to no shrinks and the way voltages scale with Ryzen, from what I understand. But I'm also hearing that it's got just to do with the way the architecture is uh, just, well, architected. That was a terrible sentence. But anyway, um, a big reason behind this is essentially the way Epic processors will be a big focus for AMD going forward. Um, obviously, this just makes sense. The data center, HPC, etc., etc., just sell bazillions of CPUs. And of course, you know, they are just going to simply make more money um, with those versus, you know, one CPU that you're buying for your, for your gaming rig. And obviously, Zen 5 will differ, you know, a little bit here or there. You know, there will be some differences, like, for example, the IOD, etc., etc., etc. And that's not to talk about the dense versions of the, you know, the chips, um, which obviously, you know, higher core counts and all the stuff. But, you know, in general, we're talking about, you know, a general architecture. Now, this gets us more onto the IPC situation. And things perhaps are getting a little clearer. Now, of course, there were those IPC slides that uh, Tom over at Moore's Law is dead recently leaked. And they seem to indicate around a 10% performance boost. Now, this is significantly less than the performance that I and others were hearing. Now, from what I understand, those slides are based upon spec int. And speaking to various sources, this situation is becoming a little clearer, but honestly, I'm still left with a lot of questions. Basically, it seems that not only do single thread and multi-thread workloads make a lot of difference, but it's also the type of work. Now, obviously, that's just pretty standard. Um, if you were to benchmark any CPU, Intel, AMD, and you were to run it, you know, generation versus generation, that type of stuff, it's not a total parity. So, oh, sorry, it's not a total, like the IPC gains from one generation to another are not going to be identical. So a really simple way of explaining this is if you have two processors, um, let's just say hypothetically you have like Zen 1 and Zen 2, and you run them at exactly the same speed. Um, and obviously, let's just say that the core counts are the same. So let's say eight cores. You are not going to get identical performance gains with all games and identical performance gains with like heavy floating point work and, and integer work, etc., etc. But the reality is, you know, most games, most workloads, they have a more mixed workload. Now, obviously, mixed workload isn't to say 50-50. And again, I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass, but a workload, for example, for one thing could be like 70%, 30%, or like 60, 40, etc., etc. And it's also going to differ on crap tons of stuff, which is happening. It becomes very complicated, is essentially my is essentially what I'm saying. And that's to say nothing of other things like how much it's taxing IO and caches and all the other crap which goes into a CPU. Uh, branch prediction, blah, 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 blah. But I'm hearing that basically mixed workloads, integer and floating point, 
particularly scale quite decently and 20% plus isn't unheard of. But yes, heavy integer workloads seem to be closer to the slide, which again is based upon spec int. Now, personally, I want to be as, uh, I want to be optimistic, but I also want to have a healthy dose of skepticism because not only, of course, are these leaks with not official benchmarks, but even if they were official, AMD have a pretty good track record of being either optimistic or sandbagging, and AMD are not the only ones to do this. So I'm going to be very interested to see how all of this turns out. I think, basically speaking, um, there is also the fact that Ryzen, and I've spoken about this before, but I'm just going to mention it here, the IOD basically between Zen 4 and 5 is essentially identical. There are some optimizations there, but basically it's the same. So you're going to have a slightly higher clock frequency support for memory, but you are definitely going to run into bandwidth constraints on certain workloads. So it's going to be ultra interesting to see what happens with Zen 5. Um, I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of discussions, not only from reviewers of what speeds are best to review a product with, because that's the other thing as well. Like, if you're reviewing a product, there's no... I mean, there... Okay, you could argue there is a right way of testing a product, but you can also say that there's not really. And I'm very curious to hear your thoughts, actually, on this in the comments below. So please let me know. What do you guys think is the best way to review a product and analyze it so for example if you have like let's say you're reviewing zen 3 and zen 4 or like a, a 14900k what memory speed should you test that with should you test it with all of them being the same you know mts should you do it with the, the highest supported official configuration for each so for example if one's 6200 and one's 5600 or 5200 or whatever is that what you should test it with should you just go to the limits of the chip like there are so many different ways you can you can you can argue that i mean you know i, I think it's quite a big conversation so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens and that's not to even take uh, the x3d into account which <laughs> that's gonna be fun anywho i also want to talk to you guys as a small bonus about some cpu code names now zen 5s we already know of course and that is 1ah i'll repeat that 1ah and then zen 6 is going to be 20h and zen 7 is going to be 21h according to what i have been told it's going to be extremely intriguing to watch the CPU market going forward. Now, of course, we've spoke a lot about Zen 5 and even some Zen 6 stuff on the channel, plus stuff like um, Arrow Lake from Intel. But it's also hard to deny that there are a lot of other competitors, mostly, of course, ARM-based. We'll talk more about that in another video because, honestly, it's quite a large topic. But there's one thing for certain the desktop is not going anywhere it's just going to be well let's just say experiencing some changes over the next several years and anyway hopefully you have enjoyed this video if you did well it's youtube i don't need to tell you guys what you need to do you need to of course subscribe to the channel and leave a like again i would also ask you guys your opinions on how cpu reviews should be conducted there's also some other stuff for example <laughs> like cooling situations uh so yeah i'm just kind of curious about that um how you feel uh cpu reviews should be conducted um particularly again when it comes to things like memory speed configurations power consumption you know all of that stuff with that said take care of yourselves have an amazing day stay safe bye for now